I just finished designing a 3D printable version of the Pratt & Whitney PT6. A cutaway model where things move like in the real engine. The assembly is split into three sections. This is section three, let's begin. Okay, with that, welcome to the final section, the third section, which is also the easiest one. We're gonna be done pretty soon. As always, let's make sure we have all the parts and if everything is there, we can jump right in. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the two temporary screws we put in earlier, connecting the exhaust casing to the turbine casing. Remove those carefully. And we're just gonna have it sit like this with no screws attached. On to the second step with 11 screws, nuts, and washers. This is where the fun starts. We're gonna grab our assembly we built in section number one, and we're gonna carefully join these two sections together. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. As you can see, the turbine casing is getting sandwiched in between the other two. So we're just gonna fasten it down like that. Positioning this and pushing the screw through all three sections is definitely a little bit more tricky, but take your time and I'm gonna add the rest of my screws now. All right, just like that, the whole main body of the engine is assembled. This is the point at which you turn everything and test everything out, make sure everything rotates nicely. Does the spline disengage and engage again? If yes, we can move on to adding the accessories. Step number three, all right. For step number three, we're gonna lay the engine with the backside up, so just like that. And we're gonna grab our exhaust. It has two notches here, and they mesh with the exhaust port. And we're simply gonna glue it on like so. Okay, now I added glue to the side of the notches right here, here here and here just a little bit. This glue is super strong. I'm not worried about that at all. FYI, there is an orientation, so you either have to put it on this way or flip it 180 degrees and put it on that way. I'm just gonna hold this down for a moment until it cures and I'm gonna wipe away any excess. Okay, it's looking sweet. Okay, whilst we're waiting for this to cure, we can head on to step number four. We're gonna grab the governor plate, the overspeed governor plate, and the tack generator. And we're gonna be screwing them into the front casing using screws and washers only. These self-tap into the front casing. All right, let's flip the engine over. And we're gonna start with the governor plate, which is this with the grooves inside. And we're gonna grab a screw with a washer and attach it to the front here. Just by screwing it in, it will self-tap. So don't undo these thousands of times. Best you put them in and you leave them there. All right, let's grab the overspeed governor plate, which is just the square one, and we're gonna attach it to the opening side of the engine, so right here. All right, this is what it looks like. You can decide which side you want turned up. In my case, I like the rougher surface of the top layer of the print, but of course you can flip this over and have your build plate texture exposed. Okay, we're gonna flip this over again, exhaust port upwards, and we're gonna grab our tack generator and attach it in any orientation. Originally, this element points in this direction, so pointing down, so that's what I'm gonna do. Again, self-tapping, no nuts needed. Okay, this is the front accessories done. If this is what it looks like, for you, we can move on to step number five, where we're only gonna need six screws. These are purely aesthetic, and they go also in the front casing. And we're gonna use them for this element here. There's one here and another one down here. And you can see they have holes, same principle, self-tapping. We're just gonna put six screws into these. So just like this. Okay, and this is what we're left with. I think this front section looks awesome. So many screws, so much going on. I really like it. All right, next step, step number six. We're gonna grab our fuel injectors, all nine of them. We're gonna flip the engine backside up again, 
and we're gonna focus on these holes right here. So as you can see right here, this hole, this is the casing, this is the liner. The fuel injector will go through the casing into the liner and it will poke out just like that. Now we're gonna glue these in like this and like this. We want these facing each other. So if I get another one, these have to be facing each other perfectly. Let's do that with all nine of them. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of glue and now we're just gonna push in the fuel injector. It should be facing the other holes and we're gonna repeat that with the rest. Okay, last one, we're just gonna push that in. And now we're gonna let these cure properly because for the next step, we need a strong bond between the injectors and the casing. Okay, after we have let this cure for a while, we're gonna move on to step number seven, which is the fuel lines. Now, we didn't print any fuel lines. You're gonna have to grab your spool of filament. I hope you have some left over and you're gonna cut 350 millimeters of this, like so. If you're using my kit, now is the time to pull out the piece of yarn or something that was included in the kit that measures exactly 350 millimeters. So we're gonna use this yarn to measure out the 350 millimeters, line the two ends up, and the end of the yarn is where we're gonna make our cut, just like so. There we go, that is one of two few lines complete. You can use any color or material you like for the few lines. For simplicity, I'm using the same material as the fuel injectors. So I'm gonna make my second cut right here, and that's our second few line. We can put aside the filament and the yarn, we don't need those anymore. And now we can thread our fuel lines, the filament through the fuel injectors. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna focus on these little openings right here and push the fuel lines through all of them. So we're gonna go all around threading the fuel lines through the fuel injectors. This is a fast process. And if there's anything pointing out on this end, we can cut off the excess. There we go, that's our first fuel line. And I'm gonna repeat that with the second one. Again, I'm gonna cut off the excess. Of course, if these are too loose for you, you can add a little bit of glue to any of the injectors holding the fuel lines in place. Okay, on to step number eight, which is a big one. We're gonna grab the generator mount, we're gonna grab our oil pump, our fuel pump, and our rod brace which is the center part. And we're gonna focus on the back part of the engine. Remember on the cheese plate, this flat part is the top. We're gonna grab our generator mount. And again, we're gonna use screws and washers. No nuts needed. This is gonna self tap into the cheese plate. Okay, so there is a right and wrong orientation for this, but if you just open your eyes, you'll be able to tell you have done way more difficult for this build so far. All this tightening down screws makes your wrist go tired, which of course is a feature built in wrist workout. Let's go. Okay, next up the oil pump. The process for mounting these accessories is all the same. Two holes here, mounted like so. Okay, next accessory is the rod brace. That goes onto the rod center, just like that. Boom, four screws and you're done. Okay, last accessory is the fuel pump, which slides over the shaft right here, just like so. There is a wrong orientation. You want these two parts right here horizontally, so we're gonna mount it like that. Okay, the cheese plate should look something like this. Make sure you don't over tighten and strip the plastic. You do not want that happening. And on to the next step. Okay, this is a fun one. We're gonna grab the generator, we're gonna grab the knob, the oil cap, says oil on it, and the oil tube, of course. All of these things are being glued onto the back. We're gonna start with the generator. Very simple, we have a male hexagon here, female hexagon there. We're just gonna slide that on top. You can orient it whatever way you like. I like having this label looking up. And if everything fits nicely, we're gonna finalize with glue. I'm just gonna add a drop to the walls. 
Let that cure and then we're gonna glue in the oil tube. Grab our oil tube, which is gonna feed through the hole right here on the cheese plate. And not only there, but also on the gear cover, make sure that slides in through nicely. And I have designed a small little notch there, so that will lock this oil tube in position. We just have to add some glue in there, pop that on, and, and that's done. Okay. Okay, we're gonna let that cure properly, and meanwhile, attach the knob. The knob we will attach to this shaft right here that goes through to the accessory gears, dry fit before you glue. That fits well, make sure everything rotates, okay. And make sure you don't glue the knob to the fuel pump. We do not want those two pieces touching. There is a tiny little gap between the knob and the fuel pump and we want everything to rotate smoothly. Let everything sit for a while and then we can add the oil cap. What is cool about the oil cap, a small little feature I added is these nostril looking things, which is a holder for your M2.5 wrench. And then your wrench is stored away neatly in the oil tube and it will double as a dipstick. So that is pretty cool. Let me show you. The oil cap goes on the oil tube, rotate, it clicks in place and you have your wrench in there as your dipstick and you don't have it flying around in some drawer. You can store it neatly in the oil tube, which is a neat little brainchild of mine. I'm pretty proud of that actually. Okay, step number 10, super simple and easy. We're gonna grab our inlet meshes. You can decide if you want the print bed surface or the top of the print surface sticking outward. We're gonna focus on the inlet section here. As you can see on the inlet, there's two guides left and right. We're simply gonna take the mesh and push it along these guides. Do that on both sides. No need to glue them in place and it looks pretty neat. Okay, step number 11. We're getting really close to the end now. We're gonna grab our engine stand and our engine plaque, the only part printed in two colors. You can do this with any color you want. For simplicity, again, I'm using the same colors as used for the engine. We're gonna need two screws and we're gonna insert the plaque into the stand just like that and fasten it down using your screws. Super simple and straightforward. You don't need washers, it's just the screws. This self tappens straight into the engine plaque. And this makes for a really, really secure connection. Your engine plaque will not be going anywhere except if you <laughs> yoink it off or something. This is a display model. I hope you're not throwing things around too much. Okay, that's what it looks like. Pretty neat, huh? And we're moving on to step number 12, which is the final thing to do, and that is placing the engine onto the stand. Now it is not as easy as just popping it on. Actually it is, I did make it optional. You can either sit the engine onto these flat parts up here, just place it on there without mounting it, or what I really recommend is mounting it to the engine using fasteners. Okay, this is where we're gonna mount the stand. Between the compressor and the combustion chamber, we're gonna undo the first bolt right here, then skip three bolts and undo the fourth one. And for the section in front, we're gonna undo the second one, then we're gonna skip one screw and undo the next one after that. Okay, now we're gonna grab our engine stand. The front of the stand goes in front like this and the rear of the stand comes in from behind. We're gonna lock this down with our bolts just like that. As you can see, no nut wrench needed. The back is connected. It should look like this. Important for the front connections is to remove the washer. If you leave the washer on, this will not work. Remove the washer, otherwise there won't be enough bolt left over and it won't be sticking out. We're gonna grab our nut wrench from our oil cap and tighten it down nicely. Okay, and repeat that for the other one as well. 
Okay, I know that might have been a little bit confusing, but here is what it's supposed to look like. Another cool feature of this stand is that you can attach it at any desired angle. So we can go up one, up two, whatever you'd like. You can mount the engine stand to your wall if you want to using these holes right here. And then you can adjust the angle to have it facing the way you'd like. That was the last step for the engine build. I hope you were able to follow along. The last page is a beautiful render of the backside of it. And with that, I can close the book. All right, we made it. Doesn't it look awesome? I've been making these instructions the last three days and my voice is starting to give out. But I'm gonna do some B-roll for you, show you all the features. I hope you could follow along and had as much fun as I did building this engine. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Dang, it looks so cool, man. Oh my God. <laughs>